you had received some information, and I thought you said some photographs, uh, regarding the defendant's conduct, uh, which potentially could be construed as um, uh, extending the middle finger or flipping people off, including a witness. Letitia Stauk making a scene at her trial for the murder of her stepson, Gannon. It's one of six key moments in Stauk's trial so far. I'm Anjanette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. Letitia Stauk claims that she was insane when she murdered her young stepson, Gannon Stauk, in January of 2020. So the question isn't really whether or not Letitia Stauk murdered Gannon Stauk. We know that she killed him. The question the jury will really have to decide is whether or not Stauk knew what she did was wrong at the time. Prosecutors say on January 27, 2020, Letitia Stauk attacked Gannon in his bedroom. They were living in El Paso County, Colorado. That's in the Colorado Springs area. Investigators claimed they found blood on a mattress, walls, and floors, as well as in Stauk's vehicle. Deputies believed that Stauk acted suspiciously when the child was first reported missing. Another person who found Stauk acting suspiciously when her son Gannon went missing was her ex-husband, Al Stauk, Gannon's father. Here's a recorded phone call of Al confronting Letitia about Gannon's disappearance. And I want you to know that no matter what, no matter, no matter what, we can work through this together and I can help you, okay? But you just got to let me help you. But I have a very, you told me to be straight up. I got a very straight up question, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Did you kill Gannon? I need to know. I need you to answer me yes or no right now. I killed Gannon. Did the you? answer is no. I can't believe you asked me this. I just got to know you. I told me to be straight up. I got to know what's happening to my son. I Tell me why you would think I killed Gannon. There's a, there's a lot of unknowns. I mean, you I, I, being straight up again, you changed your story again to me for the fourth time. No, I changed my story. You did. This is the fourth version of the same story, okay? Wow. I, 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 like half of what you told me today, with the cut foot, and now he's got burned arms and picking it and his butt's bleeding. All this stuff is, is new to what you told me the other day. And the other day you told me to cl you cleaned up the area where you got raped so nobody would see it. But now you told me you just changed clothes. I just don't know what the hell's going on. I didn't tell you. First off, you never even listened to me about anything that went I on. did. I, no, you stopped because I listened to you. I listened to you, and then I went and got the guns and put them in the truck, and then I came back and listened. Me and Landon listened to you, and then I stopped and picked your story apart. So get it straight, Tisha. I listened to you, and I said, if I'm wrong about the rape, I will get on my knees and beg you for forgiveness. Did I not say that? Yeah, but you haven't. Exactly, because I haven't been proven wrong yet. I want the truth. If I'm wrong, if, the, if, if the, the police, no matter what they're doing, the FBI, the CBI, the CBS, whoever, okay, if they tell me I'm wrong, I will publicly, in front of the world, get on a camera and tell you I'm sorry. But until that happens, we're going to find the truth. How can you tell me that someone didn't come? I don't understand. How can you tell me that someone didn't do something to hurt me and take me in? I'm, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you... It hasn't been proven one way or the other. You said you banged your head on the freaking table. I, now I got to tell them to go check out the table and see if there's any blood or, or any of your... I knew that. They had already asked that. Okay, but that's the first I heard of it. You see what, you see what I'm saying? You never would talk to me. You literally just sat here in a conversation and asked me did I kill our child. Yes, I did because, I, I, because if you say no, then I can't, I, I'll stop thinking that you did it. Okay. Now, it's pretty clear that Letitia Stauk is not coming clean about what she knows to her husband, Al, the father of Gannon. And she goes on to tell Al that she would need immunity from prosecution in order to tell him or anyone else what happened to the little boy. During a preliminary hearing back in September of 2021, investigators revealed Stauk rented a budget rental van and information was gleaned from a cell phone in early February of 2020. In court testimony, data collected revealed the van traveled from Colorado to Florida. Gannon Stouk's remains were found stuffed inside of a suitcase under a bridge in northwestern Florida in March of 2020, about six weeks after Letitia Stouk's trip to the area. An autopsy showed Gannon had been shot and stabbed, and he had defensive wounds on his hands. Macon Ponder testified about participating in a search for Gannon Stouk's remains in Florida, 
He found a suitcase and described what he found when he opened it. What, did you open it? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that. <clears throat> I was the first one to unzip it. <clears throat> and before we opened it, as soon as we unzipped it, we immediately noticed the smell. That's what hit us first. We cover a lot of horrific crimes here on Law and Crime. And this one really takes things to another level. It's really unbelievable what people will do to one another in these cases. And poor Gannon, you know, a boy who trusted his stepmom having to die like this. Now, remember, we know that Letitia Stout killed Gannon. It will be up to the prosecution since Letitia Stout has pleaded insanity. She said she didn't know right from wrong at the time. The prosecution really has to show the jury that, yes, indeed, Letitia Stout knew exactly what she was doing and that it was wrong when she did it. A key witness who took the stand in the trial was CBS4 reporter Spencer Wilson. Wilson interviewed Letitia not long after Gannon was reported missing. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. Gannon is so kind and he loves to play video games. That's one of his favorite things. He loves Sonic and Mario and, you know, he's always helpful. And I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house. And we have two little cute dogs and he was always like a person I could say, Gannon, can you go do this? And he would do it right away. You know, sometimes with kids, we have to remind them and things like that. And that's okay. But he was so sweet and able to help anyone. He could notice when you're sick and say, are you okay? And such a kind heart. Um, I know you just said that you can't say anything about the investigation. So you can just say so again, if you can't answer this, but is there anything we can hear about the hike? Was there a hike? You don't, that just seems like rumors right now. You know what? Um, could we bring uh, my daughter up here? Cause she can, per she can go and say that, you know, she came home from work after the hike and she can verify that Gannon was at our home. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. Do you feel like these are just internet detectives who think they know what they're doing? It definitely is. And you know, here's the thing that kind of saddens me. It's like, if you're going to talk about someone like that and have a witch hunt out for them, why would you even care like about doing those things because this is a child you're telling me that you're just as mean you're just as hateful to talk about someone else like that that's how i feel like we just should not we should all come together and wait until the end and, and see what happens because gannon's going to come home any message for gannon the message for gannon i have is gannon when you get here you'll be able to truly tell what happened and then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family is that we love you and miss you and we hope that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. Mr. Wilson, um, did the defendant appear to be of sound mind to you while you were with her? And yeah. No, he can uh, give his opinion regarding what he thought about her mental state at the time. Yes. Uh, did she seem to be able to answer questions to you logically and give coherent answers? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, to your memory that she was driving the passenger vehicle. Yes. Did she seem to be following the rules of the road? Yes. Could she stop when she was supposed to stop? Yes. Uh, was she driving on the right side of the road as opposed to the left? That's correct. Um, during that interview, uh, do you remember, is there a point in time where she's referring to Gannon in the present sense and then she changes it to the past tense? Yes. Uh, do you remember when that was? Uh, we just watched it. Okay. Now. Sorry. So as you heard, Letitia Stauk is talking about Gannon in the present tense as if he is very much alive, but then she changes it up and she's talking about him in the past tense, which is a little bit of a tell. And she also seems to be a little bit more worried about uh, showing that she's innocent rather than being more interested in where her stepson is. Letitia Stouk's daughter, Harley Hunt, was nearly charged as an accessory in this case. She was on that trip to Florida with her mom when the body of Gannon was dumped over that bridge back in 2020, although Harley said she didn't know that Gannon's body was in the van with them. How was your mom acting as you checked into this hotel room? Um, she was acting normal. Up until this point, had you ever gone to the back of that van 
No. At any of the stops up to this point, had you gotten any change of clothes or gotten any suitcases out of the back of the van? No. At any point during this trip to Pensacola, did you smell anything in the back of that van? No. Do you know why I'm asking you if you smelled anything in the back of that van? Yes. Why? Because Gannon was back there. How do you know Gannon was back there? Because you guys told me that there was evidence that he was back there. Did you later learn that Gannon's body was found in Pensacola, Florida on yes. March 17th? Yes. 2020. How did you learn that? When they arrested my mom and the FBI, like, came to the house and told me. So what happens when you wake up? Morning hours of February 4th, 2020. What's what's going on in the room? Tell us about when you checked out and things like that. Yeah, it was just like all the other days we just check out. Afterwards, we go grab breakfast and then we go to Orlando. Why are you going to Orlando? She was planning that that's where we could stay. Um, I remember her like calling apartment places to like see if we could live there as, as far as you concern is that where you're going to be living yes at the end of this trip? yes miss son i want to ask you a, a direct question okay okay did you help your mother throw that suitcase over a bridge in pensacola florida no i did not on february 4th 2020 no i did not now, Letitia's own daughter, Harley, was forced to go on this trip to Florida, having no idea that Gannon Stalk's body was in the back of the van. And suspiciously, she said the entire time they were driving, the air conditioning was on, despite the fact that it was wintertime. She said that she never looked in the back of the van during that long car ride. Harley explained what would happen when she asked her mother about why they were driving to Florida. Did you ever ask your mom? What are we doing? Why are we leaving? Cannon's missing. Why aren't we out looking for him? That kind of stuff? Um, no, I didn't really question her a lot. Why didn't you question your mom? I would be told that, um, like I'm being like disrespectful or like talking back. And what would happen if you were being disrespectful or talking back to your mom? Sometimes she would like backhand me. Where would she backhand you at? To my face. Is that why you just didn't say anything and you sat in the van and went wherever she was driving? Yes. Overruled. Do you eventually go to Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you recall staying the night in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you remember what hotel you stayed at in Amarillo, Texas? No. Did you stay at a Candlewood Suites? Sounds familiar, yes. And do you remember watching some videos of you and the dogs walking into Candlewood Suites in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. On Cross, the defense tried to claim that Harley is a manipulator and used a GoFundMe to gain sympathy. You will, at times, manipulate the truth for your benefit. No. And, well... So when you were living in South, so between when your mom got arrested and now you've been living with some different people. Yes, I lived with one different person. Yeah, you live with Dee Dee? Yes. Okay. You were also getting financial support from Aunt Brenda? Yes. And Brenda had bought you a car? Yes. And then she took that car away from you guys because you guys had a different disagreement yes um and it was difficult for you to get back and forth to nursing school yes and so in january of 2023 you set up a gofundme page yes and on that gofundme page you say hi my name is harley for those of you who don't know my story i lost both my parents a few years ago when i was 17 years old that statement seems to imply that both your parents died when you were 17. I don't think it does, no. Okay. Well, your dad had died a long time before that. Yes. Okay. And you didn't lose your mom. Your mom was just in prison, in jail in Colorado. I lost her. Okay. But you don't think that that's 
at all misleading to get people to give you money? Nope. It was for my friends and family so they could have um, like a source to send it to me. We were likely to get more money from people if they thought your mom was dead as opposed to if your mom was in mm, No. Now, as the investigation into Gannon Stouk's disappearance moved forward, Letitia Stouk was interviewed by the FBI. Take a listen to what was found on her phone's search history. Did you know in here I even have what you entered in your phone? The stuff that you've entered and deleted? Like um, blood is spurting from an arterial bleed, direct pressure not controlling. Do I? I didn't know that. It's from your phone. Blood is what? Spurting from an arterial bleed. No. Well, somebody did from your phone. I don't like my stepson. No. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? A really big moment that took place in court that really had nothing to do with the evidence in this case came back on April 14th when Letitia Stauk was flipping off witnesses who were on the stand. Take a look. What do we see in People's Exhibit 383? People's Exhibit 383, uh, we is a little bit of a different perspective, a little closer where we can see, again, the two sticker scales that were on the garage floor uh, were close to those uh, two by fours that were previously mentioned. 384. Clearly, the jury in Letitia Stouk's case has not started deliberating, but the judge has pretty much already found her guilty of behaving badly. Listen to this. Um you had received some information, and I thought you said some photographs, uh, regarding the defendant's conduct, uh, which potentially could be construed as um, uh, extending the middle finger or flipping people off, including a witness. The court's camera system recorded Letitia Stalk flipping the bird to witnesses back on April 14th. Witnesses noticed, as did jurors and the prosecution. That led to a stern warning from Judge Werner. While you have the right to be present uh, for your trial, you also have the responsibility to behave with the respect and decorum required for this formal proceeding. You also have the responsibility to behave in such a fashion as to make the use of additional restraints unnecessary. Sometimes during trial, a defendant chooses to act out. The likelihood that that will happen in my experience, it seems to increase the longer the trial takes and the more serious the charges are. Um, and I know that right now we're in week four, or we finished uh, four weeks, we're starting week five. You aren't the first defendant to act out. Probably not going to be the last. I cannot imagine the pressure a defendant feels during any trial. It's not uncommon for a defendant to disagree with certain testimony or dislike a witness or a victim. Nevertheless, you cannot act disrespectfully in words or actions. First of all, it never helps you out. You've already heard one juror uh, submitted a question regarding his observation of your conduct. They don't miss anything. It also makes your attorney's job much harder. They need to focus on the evidence presented and how to counter that rather than your conduct in the courtroom. Judge Werner told Letitia Stauk that he was changing her chair to one that couldn't move or swivel. He also warned her that he could have a bolt installed underneath the defense table and then have her handcuffs cuffed to it so she couldn't show her hands. He also told her he could find her in contempt, but the fact that she's facing a murder charge, contempt probably wouldn't mean much to her. That's it for this edition of Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can listen to Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law and Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.